listeners a sense of the Greco-Roman attitude toward plagues. And this was a passage I stumbled upon from, it has to do with the Cyprian plague, and it was written by Pontius of Carthage in the 250s, they're about, at a time when about 5,000 people a day were dying in Rome from this plague. Could have been smallpox, could have been a number of different candidates, historians aren't sure what it was. But he writes, afterwards there broke out a dreadful plague, an excessive destruction of a hateful disease invaded every house in succession of the trembling populace, carrying off day by day with abrupt attack numberless people, everyone from his own house. All were shuddering, fleeing, shunning the contagion, impiously exposing their own friends, as if with the exclusion of the person who was sure to die of the plague, one could exclude death itself also. There lay about the meanwhile over the city, no longer bodies, but the carcasses of many, and by the contemplation of a lot, which in their turn would be theirs, demanded the pity of the passers-by for themselves. No one regarded anything besides his cruel gains. No one trembled at the remembrance of a similar event. No one did to another what he himself wished to experience. And I love the reversal there at the end of Christ's commandment to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's almost like he has it in mind. Is that a fair assessment? Is that possible? I think it is very possible. One of the things to remember is that the golden rule isn't unique to Christianity. I don't know whether he knew it from Jesus or from a Roman ethicist, but it, it seems almost certain that that is echoing or inverting okay, the golden so rule that's the there. Roman response in the midst of this terrifying plague. Tell us about the Christian response. How is it different? Well, just one quick note. I think the Cypriot plague was more likely not to be smallpox, but to be something more like okay. Ebola, something along those lines. When you look at the description, it's just sort of interesting to try to uh, pin these things down. But what the Christians did, all right, let's look at the Galen's plague, second century. Galen commented that the Christians went out treated the sick. When everybody else was running away, the Christians would go out and work with the sick. They'd go out, they'd visit them, they'd comfort them, comfort the dying, all of these kinds of things, and work to relieve their sufferings. Galen's comment is that the Christians acted with complete disregard for their own lives because they believed that if they died, they just went someplace better. And the fact of the matter is everybody's going to die of something. Therefore, you know, you die of plague, you die of something else, it doesn't really matter. We've got a better life waiting for us. It's an expanded version of the comment that Galen made. You see a similar comment about Cyprian's plague made by, I believe his name was Dionysius, who's a bishop of Corinth, if I remember right, who basically said the same thing. You know, Christians are going out, they're treating the sick. As he puts it, they're taking on themselves the illnesses of others and dying of it in their place. I mean, he really puts almost a Christological spin on it. And I think that that's an important point because the early church was really conscious of the things that Jesus did for us. And while they knew that they couldn't accomplish redemption, that's already done through Jesus, Jesus did other things as well. He healed the sick. So the Christians, in imitation of Christ, believed it was their responsibility to go out and take care of the sick. You know, he tells them to, you know, that the first will be last and the last will be first. These people who are suffering, the poor, the, the indigent, all of these people are people that are made in the image of God. And so we need to do what we can to take care of them. Net result, Christians had the example of Jesus, the inspiration of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus, and the assurance of eternal life. And when you put those things together, you have a very, very powerful witness that comes as believers live this out, deal with the sick, try to relieve suffering, and so on. And Rodney Stark points out that even though the Christians couldn't cure these diseases per se, what they could do was provide, call it basic nursing care. And Stark's point was that even with just basic nursing care, the survival rate goes up dramatically. If you're left completely abandoned, not anybody doing anything to take care of you, you will die. But with basic nursing care, a fair number of people can actually survive these kinds of things.